find it. Uh, okay, where is it? Uh, there we go. What? You didn't think this is what I meant? Welcome back to the Whistle Stop Railroad. This is Poor Man's Trains, and I have a mess to clean up. Excuse me. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I have a small confession to make. I just spent a lot of money on my railroad. You see, I've decided to try and upgrade my operating system from my current uh, MRC DCC system. Um, and because I'm such a frugal individual, I have decided to try and do this in the most economically way possible. See, I'm trying out RailPro. And what I did is just got their PC adapter, so I can do their control emulator right on my computer. And just a two modules to start with uh, to test them out and see how they're going to work. Jury's still out, but so far it's looking pretty good. One of the locomotives I'm starting with, don't worry, I'll clean up the wires later. A uh, little Atherin Blue Box GP382. Uh, it's one I had a lot of fun with. I did some uh, extra painting on it, look make it more, more like the prototype. I canonized the fans on it. Um, it's had a lot of fun. And I've noticed that its performance isn't quite what I was hoping it would be, just kind of overall. One of the neat things with RailPro is that it lets you monitor your locomotive's performance as you run it. And let me show you what I mean. All right, say we're going to set the load up to about 50%. Right there. And we're going to start them off by 50%. Look at the info. The amount of power the motor's trying to pull before it finally jerks forward. So what does all this have to do with trucks? Uh, to me, it says there's a little bit of resistance going on, and that's what we're going to try to take care of. First of all, if anyone is wondering what a rail pro module looks like compared to a regular 9-pin DCC decoder, here you go. The disassembly of a blue box loco has been well documented, so I won't go into too much detail, and your loco may be a different manufacturer anyway, in which case you'd follow a different process. Basically, you want to be able to strip the loco down to the trucks. Once the trucks are separated, you'll want to break those down as well. On these old blue box units, you'll need to take the top and bottom clips off. A small flathead screwdriver really helps. Or sometimes even a hobby knife. Once you have them apart, we'll be dealing with these gears right here. You'll notice that these gears move perfectly fine, but each one is just a little bit stiff on the spindle. Now, here's a truck I haven't taken apart yet. You can see that as I push it, the wheels and gears are not turning at all. In fact, it actually takes a fair amount of pressure on the top of the gears and wheels to, to get them moving. The end result we're looking for is something nice and free-flowing like this. This is a bit of a side note. Some people add on additional sweepers to the back of the wheels to improve electrical pickup. I have found that not only are they not necessary, but they actually add resistance to the rolling unit and make things worse. I'll be taking these off. Now, back to the gears. 
I take a small piece of fine sandpaper, roll it up tight, and insert it into the center of the gear. Now, I'm not drilling this out to a larger size. I'm not creating a huge hole. I am simply honing out the center a, just a little bit bigger so that the gear will rotate much freer on the spindle. Do a little test. See what progress you've made. Hone a little more if needed until you're happy with the freer spinning gear. Basically, you want the gear to spin freely and give lubrication somewhere to actually be. Then, once all the gears are honed out and assembly spinning freely, you can add in some lubricant. A word on lubrication. Now, I'm not intending this video to become a debate on the best kind of lubricant to use or the right kind of lubricant to use. There are many options out there. What? Hey! LaBelle's makes a suite of products specific to model railroading, while others swear by WD-40. And then there are those that swear that WD-40 is the best way to burn your railroad down and your house along with it. I was going to be using that... People use automatic transmission fluid, mineral oil, gun oil, graphite. There are many options out there, and some are better than others. Hey! Really? So, the point is, do your homework, do your research, find what works for you. Now, wait just a gold darn minute. I'm using dry graphite on the gear spindles. I find it works really well. I'm also applying some to the face of the gears where well, they'll contact the sides of the case. And once they're together, I'll add a drop of liquid lubricant to the teeth of the gears. Once the gearbox has been lubed, I'll give the same clean and honing treatment to the bronze bushings on the axles. For locos with this style of axle, it's also a good time to check the axle gear for cracks. Upon reassembly, use an NMRA gauge to make sure the axles are on proper gauge and that the bronze bushings spin freely. With the gears back in place and axles reinstalled, check to make sure that everything spins like it should. So as a reminder of what we started with, here's the one that I haven't done yet. You see how it, the wheels don't even turn, you can't see the gears moving, you got to apply a significant amount of pressure to get it to move. That's our starting point. Versus, oh, not too far. This one, all nice and freed up. You see the gears moving, I'm just give a little nudge. So it's nice and free, and that's what we're looking for. Same treatment to the second truck, and they're both running free. And now with the chassis back together, we'll select the loco, set the load to 50%, and start it up. And you can see how much less resistance the motor faces running the train. With the chassis squared away, we'll get the loco fully reassembled and wiring cleaned up. Back on the tracks and hitch to a load. Again, we'll set the load to 50% and turn up the power. And you can see just how much smoother of a start the local has now. With the job done, we'll reset the full motor load current. 
Previously, it took 610 milliamps to run the motor at full load. Wow, 490. What a difference. And there you have it. A little maintenance on the trucks not only helps them run better, but also last longer too. Well, I hope you enjoy this video and that it might have given you some ideas or help with your locos. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. Drop a note in the comments. Let me know if there's anything else you like, might like to see. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to my son, Simon. Check out his channel, Simon Time, for Minecraft, Terraria, Pinewood Derby, and all kinds of games. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, happy railroading, be safe out there, and don't lick any strangers.